In today's video, we are going to cover with the current up-to-date research that we have, if cardio ruins your strength gains, at what point it might actually ruin your strength gains, when it might be beneficial for you to add in cardio to your weight training, and ultimately, if you would like to take part in weight training and cardio, what are some best practices to get the most out of both of these training methodologies? My name is Annie Miller, and I help you learn as you train and enjoy your lifts again. Today, that happens to involve getting to the facts about cardio and weight training, and ultimately, if you can do both and get the results that you want. Now, I don't know how many women actually are concerned about cardio ruining their hypertrophy, but I do think that a lot of women think that cardio is the only way to look muscular or lean or to lose body fat, and that's also not the case. So let's just bust that myth right there. If you want to look toned, which is to have the appearance of muscle at rest, you need to acquire muscle mass, and you also need to have a decently low amount of body fat in between that muscle mass and your skin. Cardio is one way to expend extra energy and burn calories. It does not inherently burn fat more than any other mode of exercise. If you would like to burn more calories, by all means, implement cardio into your exercise regime. If you enjoy a form of cardio, do it. Whether that is going to affect your hypertrophy or strength gains is what we are going to cover in today's video. We can create a spectrum if we look at maximal strength or maximal muscle gain on one end and endurance in the form of cardio on the other. I would argue that for most people partaking in concurrent training, which is some sort of cardio and strength training, you can benefit from both, but you likely won't be able to maximize either. Now that is not to say that one automatically takes away from the other. It's just to say that the body simply adapts to whatever stimulus we give it. So if your goal is to put on as much muscle mass as possible and you add in a bunch of endurance training, that endurance training at some point is going to impede on the adaptations that you're attempting to drive through that strength training. The caveat here is that in order to adapt from mainly the strength training side of things, that actually has to do with your recovery and nutrition. If you're taking in adequate amounts of macronutrients and total calories to where you are not in a deficit, you can likely increase your endurance and still make those muscular gains that you want from the strength training. If the cardio is driving you into a caloric deficit, you are potentially impeding your hypertrophy. If you look at the, that spectrum again, I would argue that if you are training somewhere in the middle, you're probably fine. The sport of CrossFit has shown us that you can push that bell curve out in both directions very far, much further than the average gym goer. If we increase the cardio and move towards that end of the spectrum, you may start to see plateaus in strength gains and your ability to put on muscle mass because you are beginning to train in a more aerobic manner. But again, I presume that you can push a lot further than most people think. Most of us should add in cardio in addition to strength training because cardio is generally good for your health. Despite the fact that most of you out there probably hate doing cardio, let alone reps over five. Before we get into the research on the relationship between cardio and weights, go ahead and like this video and subscribe if you want more. This article proves my literal point. The background of the study states both Whole muscle hypertrophy does not appear to be negatively affected by concurrent aerobic and strength training compared to strength training alone. And also, however, there are contradictions in the literature regarding the effects of concurrent training on hypertrophy at the myofiber level. Research shows that if strength training is your primary focus to ideally separate your strength training from cardio. The cardio can be low intensity, steady state, or it can be high intensity. As stated, there is research that supports both of those and also that argues that both of those impede strength gains. One argument being that high intensity exercise may increase cortisol and have a higher central nervous system demand, therefore fatigue as a negative side of things, making it harder to recover from, but also that it trains the muscles in more of an alactic manner, which could favor type two muscle fiber development. And on the low intensity side of things, there's benefits to increasing your overall mitochondria and capillary density within the muscles, which is great for overall fitness, but also that you are training in an endurance manner, which is counter to strength training. My point is that there are arguments to be made on both sides. This systematic review done in 2022 looked at actual individual muscle fiber types, so type one, type two, and type two B, and how they are affected by concurrent aerobic training and strength training compared to just resistance training alone. 
So I'm just gonna straight up share with you three key points from this meta-analysis. Number one, in this meta-analysis, we report that concurrent aerobic and strength training can attenuate muscle fiber hypertrophy compared with strength training alone. That just means that when doing cardio, the aerobic states that were in this meta-analysis with strength training, they found that the cardio piece of things slowed the muscle hypertrophy, meaning your ability to grow muscle. Number two, this interference effect is relatively small and may be more pronounced when aerobic training is performed by running compared with cycling, at least for type one muscle fibers. So that tells us that maybe the form of cardio can also have an effect on whether or not you are going to still be able to get results from your strength and hypertrophy training. Number three, none of the other subgroup analysis revealed any differences between concurrent training and strength training alone. So what I think you can take from this is that you can do whatever form of cardio you enjoy separate from your strength training if you have that luxury. If you do not have that luxury, then do your strength training or hypertrophy training first, and then tack on your conditioning at the end of your strength training. From a cardio standpoint, perhaps running and its eccentric load is not the best for retaining muscle mass if that is your goal. Is this something I think you should lose sleep over if you enjoy running, or perhaps it is the only access of cardio that you have? Absolutely not. Remember that the interference effect is small, if there is one. Don't sweat it, pun fully intended. <laughs> okay, I'm laughing. I can laugh. No. <laughs> For I <clears throat> you fucking the pun got you, God. For time's sake, you could add low intensity cardio on upper body days if those tend to be quicker lifts for you. You can also tack in some short, higher intensity exercise on the end of leg day if that day tends to be higher intensity training. We just want to make sure that you are adequately recovering with sleep, hydration, protein intake, and rest in between sessions. That way you are going to get both of the benefits from cardio training, and your weight training. I made a mistake in my early 20s of doing stair climbers super aggressively before leg day, and I mourn the gains that I left on the table because of that choice. If strength is your goal, you do not want to enter into a training session fatigued. Don't make it more complex than it needs to be. Do you do cardio? Is it in addition to your strength training? Let me know in the comments below and in what form of cardio, how it fits into your strength training. Don't forget to subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed these educated gains.